slums just like these. This is a great paradox of France. In a country where production has soared beyond pre-war levels, where the basic necessities are plentiful, where the land is rich, the worker does not earn enough to lead a decent life. That is why a lot of them fall for communist promises of a new world where things will be different and better. Well, you've only got to walk around the back alleys to see that things could be a whole lot better for the workers of Paris. Sure, some of the streets may even look quaint and picturesque from the outside, but if you go inside, you find crowded tenements with plumbing a hundred years out of date. It's in quarters like these that the communists concentrate their propaganda, because it's here they find the likeliest recruits. That boy who's trying to earn a few francs by selling firewood. Those kids playing ball against a wooden fence. They have the party line in front of their eyes every day of their lives. Posters slapped up on the fence. Slogans scrawled on the wall. But the anti-communists are putting up posters to reply to the big lie, to expose the phony promises and the phony peace campaign. Stalin holds a sign saying peace in one hand and a club in the other. There's a takeoff on the communist peace symbol, an armor-plated dove with a gun for a beak. Stalin the Cossack dances over the satellite states, aiming his daggers at the heart of France. 